Hello students. Uh, today we are going to discuss test of convergence and uh, another topic is a uh, alternating series. Here today contents uh, of the topic is the test of convergences. Here we will discuss that is uh, what are the objectives in the test of convergences and test of convergence various tests we have that all the tests we will discuss today with the example work out, worked out experiences and uh, total summarization. This is one topic. Another topic is comes to the alternating series in this uh, uh, objectives introduction and alternating series and rearrangements and summary. Here rearrangement is important theorems two theorems we have that is the theorems are the important. Now here objectives is the infinite series is, uh, in the previous unit we studied how the series will be formed and uh, in this series is all may not be convergent sometimes. That is a no universal way to say that is immediately whether the series is convergent or not. Such a moment we have to apply that is a some logic to behind this to apply for that is convergency. Now here there are the many tests available to the test for the convergence of the series. In this lecture we will discuss the some of the test. Now test of the convergences uh, we will learn that is a test of uh, convergences it is a uh, only the positive terms of the series is, are the convergent or not. Here, whenever we go for alternating, that is a different concepts we will discuss into the second part. In this first part, it is a test of convergences. We have it is a p test, comparison test, dl numbers ratio test, Cauchy's nth root test, that another name is Cauchy root test, and Cauchy's conditional test. These are the five tests we have in our syllabus. Now, here theorem, first theorem, if we take that, it is a p test. The p test is a whenever it is a sigma n equal to 1 to infinite, 1 by n to the power of p p greater than 1 the series is convergent, p less than 1 less than or equal to 1 series is divergent. Then here that is whenever it is the infinite series of the positive terms here p greater than 1 series is convergent, p less than or equal to 1 series is divergent. Now in this proof point of view we will take p greater than 1 is a case is a first case I am going to test. It is a sigma n equal to 1 to infinite 1 by n to the power of p. So p greater than 1 first term if I check 1 by 1 to the power of p that value is 1 by 1 to the power of p is clearly. 1 to the power of p is also 1 because of p greater than 1. So, 1 by 1 equal to 1 that is the first term over. Now, next remaining two terms I will take 1 by 2 power p plus 1 by 3 power p. It is less than 1 by 2 power p plus 1 by 2 power p because of here 2 is, uh, 2 is less than 3 but here so that it is a directly it is less than 1 by 2 power p. So, here right side term is a here 1 by 2 power p plus 1 by 2 power p equal to 2 by 2 power p that we can write as a equal to 1 by 2 power p minus 1. Next another this is a first term over second term and third term three terms over. Now I am going to further remaining four terms 1 by 4 power p plus 1 by 5 power p plus 1 by 6 power p plus 1 by 7 power p is if I observe it is clearly less than 1 by 4 power p plus 1 by 4 power p plus 1 by 4 power p plus 1 by 4 power p. So, that it is a 4 divided by 4 power p that is equal to 1 by 4 power p minus 1. So, here we can write as a here 1 by 2 to the power of 2 power p minus 1. Now, in this simplification part if I take uh, another 4 terms 1 by 8 to the power of p 1 by 9 to the power of p up to 8 terms if I take 1 by 15 power p I will get that last term is a 1 by 2 power 3 whole power p minus 1. So, that it is clearly appears like a geometric series. First term is we got it s yes, 2 a power n if I take that observation is clearly less than first term is 1. From the next to 2 terms is a we got it plus 1 by 2 power p minus 1 and plus 1 by another 4 terms is a 1 by 2 power p power p of p minus 1 plus another 8 terms if we take 1 by 2 power 3 into p minus 1 what happens it is clearly appears like geometric series. The geometric series r is the 1 by 2 to the power p minus 1 it is clearly less than 1. So, that it is clearly series is p is less than 1 series is convergent and it is greater than 1 p is greater than 1 series is convergent p is less than or equal to 1 series is divergent that is a based on the, the uh, geometric series we can be decide whether that is based on the p it is a convergent or divergent p greater than 1 series is convergent p is less than or equal to 1 series is divergent it is clearly we can observe in this proof. Here p less than or equal to 1 previously I checked only p greater than 1 p greater than 1 is convergent over now I am going for that is a p less than or equal to 1 it is a 1 by n to the power of p is greater than 1 by n. So, the grouping of the terms 1 by 1 plus 1 by 2 power p if I take first two terms I am taking 1 by 1 to the power of p plus 1 by 2 power p. 
it is clearly greater than or equal to 1 plus here 1 by 2 power p first term is 1 by 2 only. So, it is greater than 1 by 2 only. Now, if I another two terms 1 by 3 power p plus 1 by 4 power p, if I take 1 by 3 plus 1 by 4, it is a greater than term. So, that greater than or 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 that equal to 1 by 2 only. Now, similarly, it is going on to the next a terms, it is go for the fifth to eighth term, it is clearly 1 by 2 only. Now, it is what happens, it is a up to all the terms, if we take s yes, 2 power n is clearly greater than 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 plus so on m terms. So, that it is clearly higher uh, n into 1 by 2. So, that limit n tends to infinite n by 2 is clearly it is a infinite, therefore, it is clearly divergent. So, p is less than or equal to 1 series is divergent, p greater than 1 series is convergent, hence proof over. Now, it is a p test proof. Now, discussion of the convergence 1 by root 1 plus 1 by root 2 plus 1 by root 3 plus so on plus 1 by root n, is it convergent or divergent? By the p test, what is the p test? Nth term I will take 1 by root n, sigma n equal to 1 to infinite 1 by root n. Here, u n equal to how much? 1 by root n. So, that 1 by n to the power of 1 by 2. So, that equal to 1 by n to the power of p, if we compare p equal to 1 by 2, p is a 1 by 2 is less than 1 series is clearly, p greater than 1 only convergent. So, p less than 1 series is divergent, that is over. Now, coming to the second example, 1 by 1 square plus 1 by 2 square plus 1 by 3 square plus so on 1 by n square. Here, sigma n equal to 1 to infinite 1 by n square, p equal to how much 2, p greater than 2, p greater than 1 because of p equal to 2, 2 greater than 1, therefore, it is series is convergent. So, first one is divergent, second one is a convergent, directly by p test we can be checked. Now, it is a comparison test, if sigma n u n is a given series and that is a, we will convert into the u n is less than or equal to v n form. So, another series is a uh, sigma v n if I take, it is a u n, comparing the u n term, it is a v n is bigger one. That bigger one, if you take un is less than or equal to vn, based on the vn convergent, then un also convergent. That is a decision we can take. So, that if sigma un is a series, a given series, if sigma un is another series we can uh, generate from the sigma un, then which is a convergent, then sigma un is convergent, if un is less than or equal to vn. Now, it is a un is clear greater than or equal to vn, it is appears, then sigma v n is divergent, then sigma u n is also divergent. This is a comparison test. Now, here comparison test proof, it is a comparison test of the two tests we have, first test. What we can take it is a sigma u a n and sigma b n are the series of the two series of the positive terms. k is the positive number. Now, if uh, uh, a n is less than k b n as n greater than or equal to m. If uh, b n, sigma b n is a convergent, then sigma u n is convergent, sigma a n is convergent. So, right side is convergent, then left side is convergent. Next, it is a, if a n is greater than or equal to k into b n, then b n is a divergent, then sigma a n is also divergent. That is a conclusion for the comparison test. Now, proof point of view, I will take it is a sigma b n is a convergent. Suppose, for every epsilon greater than 0, principle of the convergence, Cauchy generalized principle of convergence. If it is a delta greater than 0, it is m is greater than n is greater than or equal to delta. Here already previous theorems in the unit, previous unit theorems, if we apply mod b n plus 1 plus so on plus plus mod b n, uh, sorry b n mod is less than epsilon because of it is the cause general principle of the convergence. Now, it is a terms if we observe and individually it is less than or equal to b n plus 1 plus so on plus b n. So, mod value if we apply it is also less than epsilon. Therefore, it is a uh, series is a convergent by uh, sigma b n is convergent, sigma a n is also convergent. Now, suppose sigma a n is a divergent, if sigma b n is a convergent, then we can decide it is sigma b n is a but divergent, sigma a n is also divergent. Next, comparison test 2, it is the most important, various in the examination, various problems you will ask in the test, damn sure question. Here, sigma n equal to 1 to infinite a n and sigma n equal to 1 to infinite b n, 2 infinite series is positive terms I will take. If I sigma a n I know, then sigma b n also I can comparison way I can generate based on the a n is less than or equal to b n or a n is greater than or equal to b n. Now, a n is less than or equal to b n that is sigma b n we can generate from the sigma a n. After that, we can go for the testing limit n tends to infinity a n by b n equal to l 
then it is a if l is a finite non zero number not equal to zero l is not equal to zero then it is a sigma an and sigma b and both are convergent or both are divergent equivalently now it is l equal to zero it is directly we can say that sigma b n is convergent sigma a n is also convergent now it is a comparison test two now proof point of view i will take it is a limit intention infinity an by b n equal to l every epsilon greater than zero the convergency definition is clearly mod an minus an by bn minus l is less than epsilon so that l is l minus epsilon less than an by bn is less than l plus epsilon now by using the cross multiplication l minus epsilon into bn is less than an less than l plus epsilon into bn for all n is greater than or equal to m now sigma n equal to 1 to infinity an and sigma n equal to 1 to infinity bn both are the convergent or divergent together so if limit n tends to infinity an by bn equal to 0 then for every given epsilon greater than 0 and an by bn is less than epsilon for all n greater than or equal to m so that an is less than or equal to epsilon less than epsilon bn for all n greater than or equal to m so sigma bn is n equal to 1 to infinity is convergent then sigma an n equal to 1 to infinity is also convergent hence proved now example i will take I mentioned it is the most important problems. You will ask in this comparison test one question in the examination. So test for convergence of sigma n equal to 1 to infinity root n by n square plus 1. Like that you will ask. So what you should do sigma an. An equal to how much? Root n by n square plus 1. Now by comparison, here bn I will take comparison. Constant I will remove. So that numerator root n, root n by denominator n square only. So here root n by it is a denominator we can write n root n into root n, n square, one n is we can write root n into root n. So, n square is a we can write n root n into root n, one root n root n cancel so that n into root n in the denominator. So, 1 by n into root n is clearly 1 by n to the power of 3 by 2. So, b n we got it 1 by n to the power of 3 by 2. Now, here I will go for that is a simplification. a n by b n I am checking so that root n by n square plus 1 into it is comes to the numerator divided by 1 by n to the power of 3 by 2 it goes to the numerator n to the power of 3 by 2. Now I got it n square by n square plus 1 now I will take the common. So here limit n tends to infinity a n by b n equal to limit n tends to infinity n square by n square plus 1 equal to limit n tends to infinity 1 by n square 1 plus 1 by 1 plus 1 by n square it is a 1 by infinity is a uh, 0 so 1 by 1 plus 0 1 1 is a finite and non zero so directly we can go for the test based on the bn directly we can justify an is a what is the test of convergence so sigma an and sigma bn act like it is a sigma bn equal to sigma 1 by n to the power of 3 by 2 so that sigma bn is a comparison we have taken so that bn is a uh, having that is a belongs to the p test so that sigma 1 by n to the power of p p equal to how much 3 by 2 3 by 2 is greater than 1 so that it is a sigma b n is a convergent by p test so therefore sigma a n is also convergent. In this here b n is a we generate and a n by b n we compare and a limit n tends to infinity a n by b n you calculate it is a finite not 0 then we can decide sigma b n based on that sigma a n is also we can expect whether sigma b n is here convergent because of p test sigma 1 by n to the power of p, p equal to 3 by 2, 3 by 2 greater than 1. So, it is a sigma b n is convergent by p test p greater than 1. So, that sigma a n is also convergent that we can be explained by comparison test. Another example if I take in this a n equal to sigma n equal to 1 to infinity root of n plus 1 minus root of n minus 1 by n. So, a n equal to root of n plus 1 minus root of n minus 1 by n. In this rationalization root of n plus 1 plus root of n minus 1 by n into root of n plus 1 plus root of n minus 1. Rationalization I am doing. Here a minus b into a plus b in the numerator. So, a square minus b square. So, n plus 1 minus n minus 1. Here minus of minus plus so that only minus n minus uh, plus n cancel. So, 2 by n into root of n plus 1 plus root of n minus 1. Now, here root n I will take the common in the denominator. What happens? n into root n. So, b n equal to 1 by n to the power of 3 by 2. Now, if I apply a n by b n and I apply the limit, limit n tends to infinity a n by b n equal to limit n tends to infinity 2 by root of 1 plus 1 by n plus root of 1 minus 1 by n. That value equal to 2, finite, it is non-zero. Therefore, we can go for the b n based on the b n we can decide a n 
is a test we can be justified. So that it is a bn equal to 1 by n to the power of 3 by 2, sigma bn equal to sigma 1 by n to the power of 3 by 2. So p equal to 3 by 2 by p test. So p greater than 1, so that series is convergent. Therefore, sigma n is also convergent. Now, dl numbers ratio test. Here in the 17th century, it is a, the dl numbers is developed this test. It is a sigma n equal to 1 to infinity a n is a series of positive terms and the limit n tends to infinity a n plus 1 by a n equal to l, then l is less than 1 series is convergent, l greater than 1 series is divergent, l equal to 1 test fail. Now, example if I take test the convergence of n factorial by n to the power of n, here a n equal to how much? n factorial by n to the power of n, then a n plus 1 by a n I am checking, n plus 1 factorial by n plus 1 whole power n plus 1 divided by a n, n factorial by n to the power of n. So, it is a denominator terms into the go to the numerator n plus 1 factorial by n plus 1 whole to the power of n plus 1 into n to the power of n by n factorial. Here numerator part n plus 1 into n factorial I can take. So, that numerator n factorial denominator n factorial cancel. Now, only n plus 1 is a pending. Now, here denominator term n plus 1 whole to the power of n plus 1 I will write n plus 1 whole power n into n plus 1 numerator 1 n plus 1 will be there, denominator n plus 1 cancel. So, the denominator I will get only n plus 1 whole power n, numerator previously we have n to the power of n. So, that I will get n by n plus 1 whole power n. Now, I will apply the limit, limit n tends to infinity n plus 1 by n whole power n equal to limit n tends to infinity 1 plus 1 by n whole to the power of n, it is clearly equal to e. So, here it is clearly I will take that it is a limit n tends to infinite, uh, denominator it will come e. So, that uh, a n plus 1 by a n limit is equal to 1 by e is less than 1. Therefore, it is a series is convergent by d l numbers ratio test. Now, Cauchy's nth root test, it is a Cauchy's root test in the positive series, it is a sigma n equal to 1 to infinity u n equal to u 1 plus u 2 plus 1 u n. Now, here test is limit n tends to infinity u n whole to the power of 1 by n equal to lambda or l it is a based on lambda, it is a lambda is less than 1 series is convergent, lambda is greater than 1 series is divergent, lambda equal to 1 test to fail. This is a Cauchy's nth root test or Cauchy's root test. In this discussion one example, if I take n equal to 2 to infinite 1 by log n whole to the power of n, here a n equal to 1 by log n whole power n. So, a n whole to the power of 1 by n equal to here 1 by log n power n whole power 1 by n, n n is cancelled. So, I will get a n whole power 1 by n equal to 1 by log n only. It is clearly comparison less than 1 by 2, so that n e greater than e, e square, so that it is a Cauchy root test is clearly convergent, because of 1 by 2 is less than 1, so that series is convergent. So, here 1 by 2 I got it less than 1, so that it is series is convergent. It is a Cauchy's nth root test. Now, Cauchy's condensation test. Condensation test means it is a a n is greater than or equal to a n plus 1 greater than or equal to 0. Then the series is a sigma n equal to 1 to infinity a n and the series sigma n k equal to 1 to infinity 2 power k into a 2 power k. Convergence or divergence together. Now, here proof point of view I will take here sigma n equal to 1 to infinity a n equal to a 1 plus a 2 so on plus a n partial sum of the n terms I will take it is called as a s n. T k I will take from the second series, it is a partial sum of the n terms is a 1 plus 2 a 2 plus 4 a 4 plus so on 2 power k a 2 power k. If the second series convergences and the sum is clearly t, then S n is a partial sum of the n terms is we can write a 1 plus a 2 plus so on plus a n that is less than or equal to a 1 plus a 2 plus a 3 plus a 4 plus a 4, it is I am making the grouping in the terms it is a n is less than 2 power k plus 1 for all k. It is less than or equal to a 1 plus 2 a 2 plus so on plus 2 a k 2 a k 2 power a 2 k it is equal to t k is less than or equal to t. Now, t k is clearly we obtained it is a s n is a series is increasing sequence it is a, which is also bounded I, I got it from the series a o. So, that it is a t k equal to a 1 plus 2 a 2 plus so on plus 2 power k a 2 power k it is less than or equal to 2 a 1 plus 2 a 2 plus so on up to 2 power k plus 1 a to power k. It is a 2 if we take the common and 2 2 terms because of a 1 plus a 2, a 3 plus a 4. Now, it is going for that it is a as n, s n is tends to s, it is a less than or equal to 2 s and t k is clearly it is increasing and bounded. Therefore, it is a series is convergent. Now, it is a series, this is called as a Cauchy's condensation test. It is a sigma n is the conversion. 
then sigma and k equal to 1 to infinity 2 power k a 2 k power k is also convergent. It is divergent then that is also divergent that is condensation test. Now, another example one example it is a convergence of the series it is the most important problem 1 by 1 into 2 into 3 plus 3 by 2 into 3 into 4 plus 5 by 3 into 4 into 5 plus so on. In this uh, sum of n terms if I take uh, n terms if I take nth term I am checking here what is nth term numerator it is having 1 3 5 so on. So, it is a first term is 1 and it common difference is a 2. So, nth term is a T n equal to a plus n minus 1 to d because of arithmetic progression a is 1 plus n minus 1 into difference is 2. So, 2 n minus 1 is a term it is a numerator nth term is a 2 n minus 1 that I can take a n equal to 2 n minus 1 divided by denominator is a n 1 is a n 2 is a n plus 1 3 is a n plus 2. So, that it is automatically increasing. So, that nth term I can take a n equal to 2 n minus 1 by n into n plus 1 into n plus 2. Here whenever the he will give like this problem we can go for that is a uh, arithmetic progression. So, such a way we want to identify that nth term a n equal to 2 n minus 1 by n into n plus 1 into n plus 2. Now, b n equal to here numerator n you take the common 2 minus 1 by n. Denominator we take the common all terms in the n, n, n plus 1, n plus 2. If we take the common n cube we get in the common term in the denominator. Numerator n I will get so that n by n cube. So, 1 by n square only I will get the term. Here b n equal to n by n cube equal to 1 by n square. Now, based on the b n I can decide the a n. So, that sigma b n equal to sigma 1 by n square. By p test it is a p greater than 1, 2 greater than 1. So, that it is convergent b n decided. Now, I will check for the comparison limit n tends to infinity a n by b n equal to limit n tends to infinity 2 n minus 1 by n into n plus 1 into n plus 2 divided by 1 by n square. Here n square goes to the numerator it is limit value is the limit n tends to infinity 2 minus 1 by n by here 1 into 1 plus 1 by n 1 plus 2 by n so, total simplification 1 by infinity is 0 n value I am substituting into the infinite. So, final answer is result is a 2 not equal to 0. So, that it is a based on the b n we can decide the a n. So, that b n is clearly sigma b n is a convergent therefore, sigma n is also convergent. In this summarization by using that is a test it is a p test comparison test Cauchy centro test and dl numbers test it is a sequence infinite series is a we can decide it is a convergent or divergent. It is a uh, based on the nth terms we can be decided it is a convergent or divergent and uh, some of the observationally we can say behaviorally uh, behavior of the sequence observations so we can decide whether the sequence is convergent or series is a convergent or divergent. Now, last topic is alternating series it is a uh, in this we will discuss objectives and introduction alternating series and uh, rearrangements and summary already alternating series we, we discussed in the previous unit. Now, here rearrangements is a focusing topic here we have a two important theorems that is in that he will ask one question is a most important in the examination. Now, alternating series uh, generally it is introduction part I will discuss it is a uh, objectives introduction and alternating, uh, uh, alternating series uh, objectives is a totally it is a series is a terms are the uh, positives and uh, negatives are alternating then it is called as alternating series. This alternating series objective is whether it is convergent or divergent or conditional convergent or absolutely convergent that I want to be decide in this alternating series that is the total objective of the series. Next in this introduction part it is a series are a convergent or divergent absolutely convergent alternating series are convergent convergences or divergences by previous knowledge we can be applied. Now alternating series concepts if I come it is a series formations we know sigma n equal to 1 to infinity minus 1 whole to the power of 1 by n then it is series is alternating series. Alternating series is clearly by Leibniz test whether it is a series is convergent or not. Next uh, 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 Leibniz test takes that is a nth term based on that limit n tends to infinity b n equal, uh, equal to 0 then it is a series is a convergent that is by Leibniz test we decide. These are the examples 1 by nth term 1 by n limit n tends to infinity 1 by n equal to 0 convergent. Here second example also convergent because of it is a limit 0 and a third example it is a not 0 2 is we got it so that it is divergent. Next it is a fourth is also it is a clearly 1 it is not equal to 0 so that divergent. Alternative series is Leibniz test is convergent and modulus of the series is convergent mod a n sigma mod a n is also convergent then it is absolutely convergent sigma mod a n is a divergent and Leibniz test is convergent it is conditionally convergent. 
Next, it is an example of the uh, uh, absolute convergent and conditional convergent, whether the we can be test by using the previous. Next, it is the most important theorem is a distress test. In this distress test, it is a suppose a n is a series of the positive terms. It is a a n is a each a n I am taking here. Now, sigma n equal to 1 to infinity a n is a convergent. Whenever that it is a the, the series is clearly partial sum of the sequence is a sigma n equal to 1 to infinity c n is bounded. That it is appears then only we can decide sigma n equal to 1 to infinity a n is convergent. So, the test is called as a displaced test. Now, in this statement if I observe suppose that it is a each a n of the given series can be the expressed as a product of b n and c n where b n is a decreasing sequence of positive terms with a limit 0 and the partial sum of the sequence is sigma n equal to 1 to infinite c n. Now, product is a b n and c n is equal into to the a n. So, it is a sigma a n is a c n is a bounded sigma c n then we can decide is the sigma n equal to 1 to infinity a n is a convergent. That, uh, this is a statement of the display test. Now, proof point of view I will take here s 1 equal to c 1 because of sigma n equal to 1 to infinity c n I am taking. Now, s n equal to c 1 plus c 2 plus so on c n and c n is a s n minus s n minus 1. So, it is a I will take that is a an plus 1 plus 1 plus an we can write as a b equivalent to the b n plus 1 c n plus 1 so on plus b m c m. Now, it is a subtraction if I take sigma b k into s k minus s k minus 1. Now, if it is a separating the terms of sigma b k s k minus sigma b j into s j minus 1, then it is a s k if we take the common for that it is a first term is a b k minus b k plus 1 and the rest of the terms it is a b m uh, plus b s m and b m s m minus b n plus 1 s m. It is clearly appears that is a bounded sequence s n. So, that it is a mod s n is less than lambda for each positive lambda. Then it is a uh, mod value of a m plus 1 and so on a m is less than or equal to 1 by Cauchy's test Cauchy comparison test. So, that it is a less than or equal to it is clearly more less if you apply it is less than or equal to lambda of sigma b k minus b k plus 1 plus lambda into b m plus b m plus 1. So, it is less than or equal to lambda it is a terms of that it is a constant a term we got it. So, the, the we can decide it is it is a sigma a n is a convergent by Cauchy principle for the series as, as b n is tends to 0 as n tends to infinite. So, it is series is convergent this is a proof of the distillator test. Next it is a Leibniz test it is a clearly it is a alternate series is a clearly we can decide limit n tends to infinity it is nth term is convergent then it is convergent. So, that it is a a n we can write proof point of view sigma b n b n and c n it is a limit if you apply automatically automatically it will be become that alternate series is a convergent or not nth limit n tends to infinite that is a nth term a n it is a that we can take b n c n it is a n tends to infinite it is equal to the 0 then we can decide it is a convergent. Rearrangement it is a topic in this definition means it is a sigma b n is a uh, set of the rearrangement of the finite series that is a rearrangement I will make it to the sigma a n it is a bijection principle automatically if the it is easy to understand that it is a uh, terms of the original series is a representation representations are present into the rearrangement. So, that it is a different orders if you rearrange it sigma b n is a rearrangement of sigma a n. So, here sigma a n is a sigma b n is a array rearrangements we can make. So, such a way we can decide it to the convergence it is a helpful for that easily we can identify whether convergent or divergent. This is a sequence of the rearrangements. Now, theorem is a sigma n equal to 1 to infinite a n is a convergent series of the non negative terms and sigma n equal to 1 to infinite b n is a rearrangement of sigma a n. Then sigma b n is a convergent it has and, uh, and the same has that sigma n equal to 1 to infinite a n is also convergent. In this proof point of view sigma n equal to 1 to infinity a n equal to s and b n equal to function of a a into function of f of n and bijection principle of n to n then it is a t n equal to b 1 plus b 2 so on plus b n equal to a f of 1 plus a f of 2 plus so on f of n I can write it is a maximum of f of 1 f of 2 so on f of m it is a distant positive integers of each less than or equal to m then t n I will take f of a 1 plus f of a 2 plus so on it is less than or equal to clearly a 1 plus a 2 plus so on a m is less than or equal to s. 
so that it is a clearly appears that bonded. Sigma Bn is a bonded and S is upper bound of the sequence. So, Sigma Bn is a convergent and it is a T less than or equal to S if I take Sigma. N is a rearrangement of Sigma Bn. So, it is uh, already uh, infant series it is bonded so that it is clearly uh, convergent. So, Bn is convergent, Sigma Bn is convergent, Sigma N is also convergent as a S is less than or equal to T. Next, another theorem is a rearrangement. It is sigma n is absolutely convergent series of the real numbers, and sigma b n is a rearrangement of the sigma an. So, sigma an and sigma b n as both are convergent as the same limit. So, it is a b n equal to f a into f of a n. I will take. It is a p n equal to one by two times of sigma mod a n plus a n, and q n equal to one by two mod a n minus a n. So, it is a clearly a n mod a n. It is a p n plus q n. So, that it is a both are the decided by the convergent city with the alpha of sigma a f of n is convergent city. Now, summarization it is the alternating series is the whether it is convergent by using the Dishlet and Leibniz test we can justify the alternating series is the convergence or divergence also we tested by using this uh, uh, alternating series. Here alternating series by Leibniz test we can decide it is a convergent or divergent and another is a more than that it is a by more comparisons are needed by uh, rearrangements cases we can decide whether uh, testes are the uh, distillate or Leibniz or rearrangement based on that whether the alternate series is the convergent or divergences we can justify in this method queries and thank you